folks, Doff Andale here, and I have a stack of Thrift CDs and LPs, and I want to show them to you. And look who I got, man! That why the funny angle? Because Jake came over, Aretha's back there. They want to co-host. I'm glad to have them. Love my kitties. Um, but we got some uh, good stuff to look at. Uh, I want to be clear because I think I was confusing some folks by by with the title of of the series, and I want to make sure people understand that not all of these are thrift stores that I'm going to. This is kind of a mixture. So the first store that I went to in this video was. A, a traditional uh, record store. And that's where I got the CDs. I went to Better Days Records. Uh, they've got a new location that's fairly close to the second place I went, which was the Fat Rabbit. Uh, it seems like they all are kind of in this new area, and it looks good to me. I mean, there, it seems the shops have more room and the foot traffic's better. Um, but anyway, Better Days Records, they have a special buy five $5 CDs and, and get them for 20 bucks, which obviously makes them $4 a piece. So I went up there and I picked out five, and that's going to be what we look at first. Uh, the first uh, CD, an absolute classic. It's uh, Harvest by Neil Young. Uh, nothing political being said on this channel about it. It really did not, this was not inspired by anything. I know they've been making headlines. He's been making headlines. But uh, this was more out of my exploration of kind of the, the uh, Southern California country rock uh, scene. You know, everybody's so connected. Uh, you know, I love Linda Ronstadt. I've been getting into Richie Furry music. And, of course, Richie Furry's connected to Neil Young uh, because I've been listening to Poco. And I've also been, well, I want to get a hold of some Buffalo Springfield. And that's where he was uh, in the same band with Neil Young. Buffalo Springfield had, had both uh, Neil and uh, Richie in it. Um, and of course, we know that the Eagles, uh, had, uh, Timothy B. Schmidt, who would be in Poco with, uh, Richie Frey. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's why the interest. And I just really haven't done much, uh, you know, I haven't uh, done enough exploration in the Neil Young's music, so that's what I'm doing now. So I picked up Harvest, absolute classic. I don't know if I can get a decent looking track listing there or not. By now we bought that, I got Neil Young and Crazy Horse, Live Rust, and I bought those two. I... I should have done more research before I went in the stores because I was sitting there Googling uh, ranking Neil Young's albums before uh, <laughs> before I picked these up. And uh, so hopefully I got a couple of good ones. I, I've already listened to Harvest and it's brilliant. I have not listened to Live Rust yet. Then I picked up Joe Santriani. Uh, Is There Love in Space? I'm a big Satriani fan. I've shown this stuff a lot on this channel. Uh, yeah. And I listen to this and it sounds great. So, when it comes to finding used metal here in Louisville, you know, in a, in a record shop used, it, it's hard to find it. And if you do find it, it's usually overpriced. The best you can hope for is maybe coming across some CDs, which I did. There wasn't much in the metal section, but I did snag Anthrax, State of Euphoria, 
And uh, I don't know if I've, I, I, it was okay, but I don't know that I've really hit uh, the Anthrax album that's going to make me a fan of this band yet. I'm willing to give them another shot. I know they, they have such a great reputation. Is that not coming into focus? Oh, well. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm still thinking, I, I you know, I looked at a ranking on that and, and State of Euphoria wasn't very high. But they're, they are a good band. I'm willing to try to find that record. Not, I need to do a little more research. Uh, anyway, and then the fifth album I got was uh, Johnny Cash, Bitter Tears. And uh, this is, uh, oh yeah, well, the, the subtitle is Ballad of the American Indian. Um, that was definitely a, a concern of his, was the treatment of Native Americans in our country. And uh, kind of the inspiration behind this CD. And I'm a huge Johnny Cash fan, so that was a no-brainer. What are you doing back there? I'm talking to you. Then I walked over to the Fat Rabbit and, and I picked up about four albums. Uh, one cost four dollars, so the three cost three, so they're all real inexpensive. And uh, I found four good ones. Uh, the first one. The Imperials. This is uh, just because. And uh, this is a little bit before my time. I'm going back with them a little bit. So in this lineup is uh, Jim Murray, Armin Morales, um, Sherman Andrus, and Terry Blackwood. Uh, these two would leave and form the Christian... Uh, vocal group, uh, or well, rock group, uh, Andrus Blackwood and Company, and I have I have quite a few of their albums as well. This is the lineup right before, well, when they would leave, Russ Taff and Dave Will would join the band. Um, but I was glad to pick this up. I don't know that I've ever seen it before, so that's the Imperials. Just because. It is, I've already cleaned these, it's on impact, and that is a 1974 recording. Next up is the band Sea Level. This album's called Ballroom. Um, I'm not sure how I would describe their rock, probably kind of in the country rock vein a little bit uh my interest in the band is i'm a big fan of the drummer uh joe english uh joe's probably one of the early christian rockers that i heard uh he put out and before joe uh started doing his own stuff with the joe english band he was the drummer for wings and I, yeah i'm talking to paul mccartney and wings so, anyway, uh, that's uh, Joe English is in this band, and uh, there's a picture of the band with Joe down here on the end. Sea level. This album came out on Arista Records, and it's a 1980 record. I was talking about Poco earlier, and here they are with the album Legend. Now, Richie Furry had left the band by this time. Uh, in fact, Timothy B. Schmidt had as well. We got Paul Cotton, Steve Chapman, Rusty Young, and Charlie Harrison. Uh, still a great album. Uh, this cover, believe it or not, was designed by a graphic artist that would be better known as a comedian. It was designed by the late, great Phil Hartman. Uh, yeah. I kind of learned that when watching a biography on him. 
uh, Love Phil. This album came out on uh, ABC. Kind of got a unique label there. Finally, I picked up Frank Marino in Mahogany Rush. World Anthem was thrilled to pick this up because, like I said, hard rock, used, and thrifty is rare. Um, and so I was glad to glad to come across this. Um, this is a 1977 album, and it came out on Columbia. And those are my thrift pickups from a couple weeks ago. I hope you enjoyed looking at that stack. And uh, for me, for Jake, <laughs> for Aretha back here causing trouble, uh, we just hope you're having a great week. We'll see you soon. And until then, peace.